All right, guys, welcome to another Omnibus review. And I just want to say this is my 50th Omnibus review. Now, I've done a couple of deluxe, so I guess it's a little bit of cheating. But this is my 50th Omnibus review. At least I've done at least 45. But let's just do 50 because it sounds like a great number. And for that, I really wanted to do an Omnibus that I know I would enjoy. But I wanted to see if it lived up to my expectations as a child growing up with this amazing Spider-Man run. So before we get into it, I just want to say what this collects, which is really simple. It's Spider-Man issues 30 to 58 of the 1999 run. And then we shift over to issue 500 to 514. And that's just because at issue 58, when we get to 59, it becomes issue 500 back to the original legacy number. And unlike most omnibus I read, Amazing Spider-Man by JMS is actually one that I hold pretty dear to me. It's one of those comics that actually got me into comics back in my younger years. While Ultimate Spider-Man got me hooked onto the high school life of teenage Peter Parker, Amazing Spider-Man got me hooked on the older Peter in his late 20s, early 30s, trying to help his community as a teacher while dealing with adult problems and love life. So going back years and years later, I was really hoping rereading this would be a big joy to me. And that doesn't mean that's an automatic five out of five book just because I grew up with it. Like with anything, certain things will hold up, sometimes even get better as you're older, but also sometimes get worse. So when I cracked open this huge omnibus, I was hoping to at least enjoy it as much as I did when I was a teenager. So the start of the whole omnibus is Peter Parker trying to deal with MJ leaving him while also trying to find a purpose in his work life. With a suggestion by Aunt May, he becomes a substitute teacher, a rare case of letting Peter smart showcase in the storyline. Soon into it, we get Peter just naturally fitting the role as a teacher and helping students in class in different ways. We also are introduced to some major characters right off the bat. So right away, we're introduced to Ezekiel and Morlin. And this is in the first arc, so it's not huge spoilers, but Ezekiel has the spider-like ability similar to Peter Parker, and he quickly introduces a whole new mythos into Peter Parker's life about these spider totems. And at the same time, Morlin is kind of like a vampire-like creature on his way to murder people with these spider-like totem powers. And his next target is Peter Parker. And the first arc in this whole entire omnibus is very hard to top, since it introduces two key players, a new mythos, and a hectic battle of hell as Peter tries to fight back against Merlin in a brawl that is surely one of the webhead's top five battles of all time for me. Maybe even top three if I'm being honest. This also gets to showcase a very either you fight or die type of battle that is both heart pounding but a joy to watch this is easily one of my favorite arcs of all time for spider-man and just a wonderful way to jump into the character face first and honestly most of the volume continues in this fashion of being fun and exciting and always working well with the main trio of characters i want to emphasize that peter mj and aunt may are wonderfully wonderfully written here. This is also the run that Aunt May learns about Peter Parker's secret identity, which changes the dynamic greatly, but gives us some excellent moments of Aunt May's wisdom. And I have to talk about the art because I think it's actually pretty solid with some really standout fight scenes and some moments of Spider-Man posing just look absolutely phenomenal. I'm not always a mega fan of Romita Jr.'s art, but he fits Spider-Man very well, especially when Peter is fully suited, he usually gets that down pretty damn good. The faces though on the human characters though sometimes can uh, look different, I'll say that. So there's a lot of good to be had, a lot of new villains introduced, some better than others, but overall I really enjoyed most of this. But there are two storylines that didn't really work with me, and there's a storyline with Loki about his daughter, and while not awful, it's also not nearly as interesting as it could be starring the Trickster King. I thought it was okay, but the very slow pace of it really kind of slowed down the entire omnibus for me, even though it was only two issues. The big stinker, though, is Sin's Past. Now, if you don't know why this is bad, lucky you. If you don't know what actually happens in this, I'm going to do a slight spoiler because it nearly ruins a character called Gwen from the older comic series of the original Spider-Man stories. It's not completely unsalvageable as I think there are still some great moments between Peter and MJ. Again, the character focus really does work in this entire run for me. But there is some damage that is almost irreversible at times and the plot itself is just kind of awful and wraps up way too quick and I think that's on purpose. 
But besides that, this is a really fantastic run, especially this half. It holds up as one of my favorite of all time, especially for Peter Parker, even if it has two weaker arcs in here. But as it stands, it does have its flaws and since passes a good five issues of just not very good stuff. Looking at all my reviews of each individual arc, I'm going to land this at a nice, very good four out of five. You might call it amazing. You get it? Because Amazing Spider-Man. Yes, I could be a little cheesy myself. And I think it deserves a four out of five. Not perfect, but damn, man, it's still great. Uh, you guys, what do you think? This is a run that I don't want to say is controversial with the exception of Sins Pass and One More Day. But some people hate the mythos idea and how much it changes things. Me, personally, I love it. I think it's really cool and different. And when we can change things around and make them new and exciting, to me, that's awesome. Even if it doesn't stick and things change back. But what do you guys think? Do you like this run? Do you like this volume? If you like this run and hate the second run, let me, or sorry, second volume, let me know. And if you could rate this volume, what would you give volume one of this series? Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button. If you love me, hit the subscribe button. I got more good comic book stuff coming out. And everybody, have a wonderful day.